Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to look at some potential solutions to bring in Wild Shape, Polymorph, and Disguise Self into your game. Before we get too far into the video though, I should note that the Wild Shape setup does require the D&D 5e rule system. If you are using a different rule system, I'll put a timestamp down below so you can jump right to my solutions for Disguise Self. In case you are not aware, Polymorph and Wild Shape is already integrated into the D&D 5e core system. All you need to do is pick whatever creature you want to change into and drag it onto the character sheet. And then we'll have a pop-up that lets us choose whether we have custom settings, wild shape, or polymorph. However, it does not integrate with any of the other features you may be using if you are using modules that help to automate your game, such as keeping track of duration. And it doesn't also have any fancy animations or things like that if that is something that is important to you. Okay, looking at the player's view, let's go ahead and test out the wild shape feature. I'm going to go ahead and select my character, go to the top, this is the token action HUD, select the wild shape, use the ability, and then I have a dialog box pop up here, and I can choose from a few options. I'm going to choose poison snake. And we see my character transforms, and then the, the new character sheet pops open for me, with all these statistics, but I keep my mental statistics as planned. When I'm finished, I can just click Restore Transformation. My original character sheet will pop open. I can close out both, and my character is right there. Now let's go back to the GM view to see how we set all that up. The first thing you need to do is, if you haven't already, make sure you allow polymorphing in the system settings. Next, we want to go to Model Settings, and one of the modules we need to use is MIDI QOL. In the Workflow Settings, go to Workflow, and make sure you have checked Add Macro to Call on Use, and also check auto apply item effects to targets. For our final settings configuration, make sure that the player can create new actors and create new tokens, and make sure that they have control over any tokens that they are going to wild shape into. I've created a folder labeled beasts and my player has control over all of these. With the configuration out of the way, we need to grab two macros that we're gonna bring into Foundry. These macros were developed by Mr. Hims as well as a few others in the Foundry community. They are very easy to bring in. All you need to do is copy them right here, one and then two, and then paste them in your game as script macros. I'll go ahead and show you how to do one of those right now in case you're a little bit unfamiliar with it. Make sure though you keep the names wild shape effect macro exactly as they are here and here. The capitalization and spelling is important to make sure everything else is running as expected. When you bring in the macro, just paste the text, change from chat to script, give it the name that was mentioned in the documentation, and give it a unique icon if you so choose, and then save macro. A look at the macro can see some of the crucial details. For example, we do need to have a folder where our actors are stored, but we could change the name of that to be something other than beasts as long as we match the name here as well. You can change it to be more in line with polymorph rather than wild shape by changing the lines here from true to false. And the documentation for the macro goes into further detail about this. Now I just want to grab the wild shape feature. I can grab this from the class features SRD, bring it onto my character, edit the wild shape, go to details, action type utility, and then that adds our on use macro box right here. In that box, you want to type in wild shape macro, making sure that you have the capitalization, spelling, and spacing exactly as how you titled it before. And we're done. Now we can just use the ability, select the creature we want, again from the beast folder. As a note, it did seem as though the extra polymorph creature does sometimes want to stick around, so the GM will have to go in and manually delete that. For Disguise Self, there are two solutions I'm going to cover in this video. The first uses a macro, but it assumes that your player only has one form that they usually take on. The second offers more variety, and it makes use of the wildcard feature. Let's go through both of these, starting with the macro first, and then moving on to the wildcard. The macro setup is very simple, but to show it off, let's go to Spells, and we're going to cast Disguise Self. As I cast the spell, my image is going to change and I will have an effect icon pop up at the top. And if I were to let the hour expire, the effect goes away and my icon changes back. This is what the macro itself looks like, token out update, parentheses, curly bracket, image, and then here we have the file path. This is the file path of the image that we start off as. 
and the next one is one that we want to change into. And to find the file path, it's very simple. You just copy whatever is here next to token image path. And the last step is we want to connect it to DAE. As always with DAE, you do not want to edit on the character itself. Rather, you want to edit the item in the items tab. If you try and edit on the character, it'll actually have a pop-up saying that you cannot do it in this current version. So we can go to effects, add a new effect under passive effects here, edit it, go ahead and uncheck the box transfer effect to actor on item equip. This box here, what it'll do is when you put the item onto the character, it'll automatically activate whatever effect. That is not what we want. You can give it a unique name, a unique icon, and then go over to effects. In effects, we just want to select macro.execute custom, and then whenever you named the macro, that swaps between the two images. And you can go ahead and after you are finished with all of that, bring it onto your character and you are finished. Moving on to the second solution, it makes use of the module token HUD wildcard, which when activated, if your token has wildcards set for the image path, you can select between any of the possible variations. To set up the wildcard itself, it's pretty simple. You just go to the actor prototype token, go to image, file path and then you can use the asterisk symbol the star to randomize whatever part is omitted for example here I have systems DD 5e tokens heroes this will pull from any image in this folder if I were to type a name like cleric and then put the asterisk it would only pull the images that start off of cleric this is pretty useful if you have a lot of variations that are named very similar in a similar fashion or if you have a bunch of images all together in one folder Let's go ahead and do it like this and hit update token. So looking at the wildcard, I've told it to pick any image from this folder, but I've set a default image that will always pick first and then I can change later. And then this is recognized by going to token HUD wildcard and I can scroll down and pick any of the images here as well and change them with a simple click. So this can be very useful if you set up a folder for your player with all of their disguised selves in that folder, or you name them all in a similar fashion. That's what we're finishing up for today. Thank you all for listening. Hopefully you'll be able to use at least one of these solutions in your own game. If you have enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing to my channel. I regularly release videos at least one a week or potentially two, at least I try my best. And I cover a wide range of topics such as modules, macros, and more. I am also interested to hear what videos you'd like for me to cover in the future. If you have any suggestions or comments, leave them down below and I'll take a look and see what I can do. Again, I greatly appreciate all the feedback and support I have received so far. It has been a great experience.